everybody, today I'm going to be telling you basically how easy, or the pros and cons, it is of writing your own curriculum. Let's get started. So this past year I did write, write our American history and I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the difficulties we faced. I'm also going to tell you about the, the good things about it and some things for you to keep an eye out. I've been homeschooling for six years, I believe. We're going to say six years because it's close to that. And this past year was the first year I ended up doing my own thing with history. And I did American history. And basically I went online and I looked at Bookshark Sunlight, Beautiful Feet, and book lists for American history, read alouds, independent reads, and whatever. And what we did was I had a selection of read alouds that we were going to do. I had baskets for each child for their read aloud. So it was kind of a sunlight approach to it. And then I grabbed whatever extracurricular things that we could do that would just make it more fun. In the beginning of the year, things started out a little bit slow. Um, I ended up using Josephine Pollard's books because they were free resources. And I was noticing that we would end up with 45 to an hour worth of reading. And <clears throat> even though our Dover coloring books... Um, were laid out for everybody to color. Um, there, that coloring does take a lot of muscles in your hands, and then you have to write. And so I was noticing once it was it was toward the end of the year before this finally clicked in my head that the children were just they knew that coloring would mean their hands would be tired later for handwriting. So that was um, poor planning on my part and. At the same time, um, certain things like the pickup six that I would have or some of the other activities I would have, if it did require conversation, I would get frustrated because I don't read aloud well when there's conversation going on. So that was something I learned about myself as well. And I know that it goes against everything, you just learn to work with it, but it was, I would find myself repeating children when I was supposed to be reading aloud. That's how distracted I get really easily. So with um, Josephine Pollard, I had like three books planned out and I nixed them after we finished um, her Christopher Columbus book. It was, she has really good um, content. I do think it would be easier to kind of follow along if they were independent reads and not read aloud reads. And she tells them in one syllable, so they are independent reads. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because you could read smaller portions, and that could have just been me. I could have made it smaller portions. Um, but I don't know. I knew that the children weren't engaged as well. Uh, as They weren't engaged that well. So we went from her to the Dolaire books. So like Leif Erikson, and we did um, Pocahontas. We had some Native American books that we read, and then we got into the American Revolution, and we did Johnny Tremaine. And once we hit Johnny Tremaine, we were supposed to do Witch of Blackbird Pond, but we didn't get that to read that aloud, but we had the audiobook, and I recommended the other students reading it just because I knew that if we had done that with the Salem Witch Trials, we were going to run really quickly and not be able to finish our school year up. So that was the other thing that we were running into is that even with all the planning that I had done, we were really, really quickly just running out of time with some of these books. Some of the really good ones were next. And to be honest, for, for our family, that's not so much of an issue because again, I use them as read or um, audiobooks in the car, not a problem, but my sister and the extra student we had did miss out on those. 
and they did get a glimpse of the Salem Witch Trials, so that wasn't a problem. It's not like we completely missed that, but that's really why I like a good living book is because you're immersed into that time and you're seeing everything and you're starting to comprehend and things will be retained. So once we got to Johnny Tremaine, everybody loved it and we had um, extra things that we were doing with that and about that, I think it was a little bit after Johnny Tremaine, I ended up getting the children's encyclopedia book that was phenomenal because one of the issues I was running into is that we did have these books and we did talk about this time period but we really didn't have a spine and I was realizing just how much a spine really is helpful and um, so I got that one and I got um, Apologia's Americana book I don't remember what it was called what I had really wanted was the Master Books one, which is our our story or something to that effect. I had wanted that one and I was asking on Facebook and somebody shared with me that they had the Apologia in town. And so I just went with that because then it had, what I do like about curriculum and this is what I didn't have, is that it does have a breakdown of weeks with in um, um, like timeline things and then it's highlights. What I don't like about using that as a main curriculum is, um, especially apology is, is that everything was just so little information and it really was very textbook. Um, just a lot of little information that the child is not going to retain and we did read some of that out loud and we did read some of the children's encyclopedia out loud. I can guarantee you that my children remembered much more when I read more of the living books, we used the who is, the who was, a lot was retained with those, and those are non-fiction, so it doesn't have to be a fiction book, it just needs to be a living book. And they, those were retained, our literature selections were definitely retain, retained, um, and so a lot of that um, was definitely eye-opening for me. In so far as um, spines, it was another eye-opening for me because I was realizing that they were really good at, no at knowing how much to do each day. They had some things that I had missed when, we, when I had done my selection. And so that was really nice to kind of just say, oh, by the way, this was a part of it too. And then it was really good to kind of get some projects to go with that because I love to have them work on the projects while I was doing the read aloud. When we were doing this whole thing, I started out because it was a new school year and it was, or we were kind of building on this idea, was um, narrations at the end of the week. We had done it, tried to do written narrations at, at the end of every history lesson. And our history lessons ended up being one and a half hours, which only, or sometimes two, no, it was one and a half, which only left about an hour to do science reading and grammar and spelling and handwriting. Now, you may not think that we need that much time with those, but if there was a new concept to be learned in grammar, or if there was something else we needed to do, then we were just running out of time. Um... Our, when we started out the year, it was so much easier to get Shakespeare in by the end of the year when you're trying to do more because you're realizing how quickly the year is ending and how far you did not get. Um, Shakespeare was cut out and the history lessons just got longer. And I wish I would have done a little bit better on that. Um, keeping those things 30 to 45 minutes at the most would have been, I think, so much more beneficial for us. Now I'm going to move on from that. That kind of gave you a background. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them down below. I will try to answer them as well as I can. But another problem I had with the read alouds is I knew how much my children read. So I made sure those baskets were full and there was going to be plenty of time for them to read. What I did not take into account that um, children would like to read, or my children, maybe it's just my children, um, they really like to read their own selections too. They don't just want all this assigned reading. And with 
these books I also had assigned readings. So they had their assigned history independent reads and they had other books that I would assign them to read. A lot of that I had to work with um, Ambleside and things like that. So um, my daughter was finding that she was so stressed and she was not getting to read the kind of things that she wanted to read which wasn't so much an attitude thing as it was, and I totally get this because I'm the same way, a I need to turn my mind off from thinking so hard thing. So even assigned readings, um, they they were classics and this is where I have decided to change my approach to it. Um, the classics do need a little bit more brain power and when you're tired that's not the first thing that your brain your brain is going to basically start hating classics or mine does when I have when I'm when my brain tired and I'm trying to read it and I can't do it because I am physically exhausted or mentally exhausted um, then I, I learn that I don't like or enjoy classics as much or I start associating associating them as being harder reads and my daughter was doing the same thing my sister has glasses and a lot of reading I think really tires her eyes and her mind out and I didn't put that into consideration because I knew that she'd love to read again she likes to read the books that she's been checking out and reading and enjoyment when you assign something that enjoyment is dropped a little bit because it's not maybe not something they would have normally chosen even if you choose books that you know that they're going to enjoy so some of the things that she was dealing with was a lot of reading due and not many not much reading that she got to do not only that she was dealing with two different plays this school year and that was a lot on her plate and I noticed when I started telling her, and it was mind opening to me later on, and I'll talk about that in a second. When I started letting her have a little bit more freedom in the timeline of her books, she could tell me more about them. And some of the books she didn't enjoy, and that was totally fine. I was okay with that. And some of the books that I thought would have been ho-hum, she really, really enjoyed. I was noticing, coming back to something I was, that... I noticed or um, coming back to a problem I was seeing is that I was giving my sister more and more leeway but I was still really strict with my daughter I do have that tendency to be harsher on my own children than I am on others because I try to overcompensate with the, the with some friends that are harder on anybody but their own children and so I tend to do the complete opposite and be harder on my children because I, I think it's going to balance out, but it doesn't. And so when I caught myself doing that and I was noticing my daughter just really frustrated and starting to feel like she was being picked on, I had to stealthily kind of start tapering back in what she needed to do. So that was another thing that we were running into were these um, independent reads. And so far as my son, um, he did take off with his reading this year, but again, assigned reading versus independent reads or whatever you want to call it, things that he wanted to do on his own, he would read a bunch of things that he would choose, but the assigned reading was becoming less and less and less, and um, I didn't push him so hard because he was a late reader. And again, that was something my daughter saw and I was like, okay, you're, you're totally not being fair about this, Shalise. And so I started, that's when I started cutting her back. But also with him, I noticed when I didn't push as hard, he would voluntarily write me these long narrations that were really well written. I took pictures of it and I would um, message them to my t um, friends of mine that are teachers and be like, so what grade level would you put this in? And they're like two grades above what he what he is. So that was um, really eye-opening to me that I could just chill a little bit when it came to all of these reads. Now, the book selections were fantastic. Um, we ended up throwing in more books that I hadn't planned for the school year and 
having to drop out some of the other ones and that was fine. They were definitely um, some of the big or favorite reads we had were The War That Saved My Life, Johnny Tremaine, um, Cross by Vaporals, that wasn't a favorite for the kids but I really did enjoy that. And uh, those two I particularly remember everybody really really just wanting a little bit more. The Starfisher by Lawrence Yep. It's not one of his well-known ones. Um, it was during the 1930s, I believe, and the Depression era, but more so kind of immigration. Those three books, The Starfisher, Johnny Tremaine, and um, The War That Saved My Life were the top three that everybody said was their favorite. So, anyway, if I could go back and do anything differently, I would definitely try to do a less is more approach and not try to fit in everything into one year. Now I was so so blessed um, near the, nearing the end of our school year I think it was six weeks before we ended our school year I think a viewer said look this book really looks like you would you be blessed by it can I send it to you and it was the master books um, book that I had really really wanted and she did she sent it to me and it was everything that I wanted and if I could do it over again I would definitely use those as your spine plus your read alouds so if I could do anything differently definitely definitely that the there is a teacher book and what I do like about that is the layout for your reading and some of the discussions that you can do we have not finished that book yet I'm gonna you know preface that right now and we did get book three we didn't get book one and two book three is where we were in our American history and she said look I really think you're gonna like it because it has a Charlotte Mason approach to it nailed it and it was what I was looking at before so um, if you want to write your own history that is something I would do differently is to definitely find a main spine that will cover um, a good portion. Josephine Pollard died around the world, or her books I think only go up until the Civil War. And so if I could have had a full timeline of American history, I think that would have been the best. Um, jumping in on book three with um, Master Books, I don't remember what it's called, it's like Our Story or something like that, I'll put it down here. Um, Jumping in on book three, no, we didn't feel like we were missing out a, on a bunch of, um, like, it It didn't feel like we started in the middle of a story. Um, you definitely can tell that there was previous books, but you don't feel like you're missing out a whole lot. Now, I know we are because I know that a lot of our current history has to do with the back history, but um, it did really, really well. And so, anyway, if I could do something over again, I think I would have tried to invest in a spine like that. The American History Encyclopedia book that we used, I will leave a link down below, was phenomenal. It was definitely engaging when I would read information out. Uh, we f I found a President's book at the thrift store for like two dollars and it's like these just page biographies on each of the presidents and as we got to them I would read a little bit of that and that was um, super wonderful to do. Definitely, I think you could make a whole unit just out of that book. Again, I will try to leave that link down below because I really think every homeschooler should have that one on their shelves. Um, let's see, what else? Um, and then, again, I'm, I'm going to repeat myself, less is more. There's definitely so many, so much literature out there that you can read as a free read that will give you a great glimpse of American history, you know, like Johnny Tremaine, the Little House on the Prairie series, um, The War That Saved My Life. Oh, there's definitely a bunch of literature books out there that will give you a good history. You don't have to um, make it a core curriculum. And um, as we go into this next school year, we've done our American history. We're going to go back to Story of the World, book three. I have made a video on the read alouds that we're going to do. I will leave that link down below as well. And um, the, 
I'm, I'm approaching that completely differently than I had in the basket system. And if you've noticed, there's only like three or four books that are specific to the student, but reality is with all the books that I have posted, when you finish a book, you put it back on the shelf and you grab the next one. Everybody doesn't have to read all of them, but they are going to share what they did read about to everybody um, in, in the room so that just, just for fun. Just kind of like a book club type of thing, except you're not going to have read the book as well. But you'll get an idea of kind of what's going on. And then, if you actually want to read it yourself, you'll have an idea of it and you can read it yourself. Um, anyway, that's kind of what it looked like with Planning for American History. We did um, get a really good view of how it all works. Trust me, because when things come up, the kids say things that I'm like, oh. He retained that. Fantastic. I didn't know. So um, that is always the hardest thing when you're doing something like this is to feel confident in what you're doing. And definitely I had my moments of, you know, self-doubt. And there was a lot of times when I'm like, oh, I need a test to know how much you, re you have retained. But um, really just learning to let it go and have the self-confidence that you're doing the best you can. You're not going to be able to teach them everything. You're just going to teach them how to learn so that if there is anything else that they want to learn, they can. So that was definitely the um, lesson for me this year was just do your best and leave the rest up to the Lord. All right. So that was this year. I hope it was helpful for some of you out there. I know many of you are already starting school, so this might be a little bit late. I apologize. Normally we start the day after Labor Day, but, um, yep, anyway, we'll see. And if you are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. I'm going to be posting this next week all of our curriculum choices. And so far as I can, I need to actually get the ordered, all my orders in. But, um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.